This is the third video in a series on Common Lisp. I have a file, example.lisp, and the terminal open in the same directory as the file. Today we start writing more interesting programs, using local variables and conditions. Now we want to write a function that let the user insert its name, and then it prints the name on the screen and returns the name itself. Let's start by writing a function that asks the user for its name and returns it. We define a function, ask the user for its name. Now there is a small technical details that we have to flash the output. And finally, we can read the name. Now we want to use this function to read the name once and then print it and return. We need a local variable, which can be introduced using the let command. Define another function. As usual, let is a list. Its first element are the binding that we want to introduce, which is a list whose element are a list with the name and value. Name ask name. All the remaining expression in the let list can use the variable just defined. For example, format t in which we print a is a place mark which tells the format to read the next parameter in the function call which is name the way it works is similar to function definition when a let list is evaluated its value is the last expression in the list. In this case, name let returns the value of name and then the function returns the value returned by let, which is the name itself. This may seem difficult, but when you start using it, everything becomes much more clear. Let's try to run it. Print C is another function to print on screen. And we can run from the, the terminal using sbcl script and then the name. He asks for us name. And then the first output is the one from format, while the second is the one from the return value. Inside the let, we can have even more than one definition. For example, we introduce the name variable and the variable another in which we use again as name. And then we print both of them to screen. Let's try to run it again. What if we want to change the value of a variable after it has been defined. We can use the setf form. Let's remove the second variable. And now we want to change the value of name to a greeting. setf name and then we want to concatenate strings 
which is the string i with the name with the exclamation mark and then we print directly this string and return it we can see that the value of name has changed to the concatenation of those three strings you may encounter a strange error if you try to reuse a variable inside a definition. For example, let's delete what we have written and then we just introduce a variable x whose value is 42 and then another variable y whose value is x and let's try to print everything on screen Terpri just print a new line variable x is unbound. The problem is that let works in parallel and so you cannot reuse the variable inside the definition. The solution is to use let star instead. Now the next step in writing more useful program is writing some conditions. For example, we want to decide whether a number is positive, negative or zero and print it to screen. We can write a condition using if. Let's define a function print sign which takes as input a number and checks its sign. As usual, if is a list and it expects three expressions. The first one is the condition. We ask if n is less than zero. Then what to do if the, the condition holds and what to do otherwise. In this case, we want just to print negative otherwise we print positive or zero the last expression is not mandatory let's try to run it This way of writing the program is not the optimal one. We have already seen that every list when evaluated returns something. In the case of a if, the return value is the value of the chosen branch. What this means is that we could write the same format as This way, the return value of the if is either the string negative new line or positive or zero new line. And so we can format it directly. We can see that the return value is the same. 
we could even introduce a new format string and then return just the string negative or positive or zero. Finally, we can also decide whether it is zero or positive using another if. When we have multiple branches, there is a syntactic sugar that makes the code more readable, which is the cond form. Instead of using if, we can use cond, which takes multiple conditions and what to do in each case. For example, we have n less than zero, return negative equal to zero return zero in all other cases this is always evaluated to true return positive and we can see that the return value is always the same Inside the list which tells what to do in a cond, we can also have multiple statements. For example, first we start to format something, choose a branch, and as usual, the last value is, the, is what will be returned. We will see that the if and cons are strictly related to one another. Let's return to if and write a function that takes a number and if it is even it just divides by 2, otherwise it multiplies by 3 and add 1. So let's delete what we have done. And then we define a function, next number which takes as input one number, it checks if it is even, and in this case it, ch it just divide by two. Otherwise, it multiplies by 3 and sum 1. Let's try it and it returns 3. If is different from the fun, let or con, we cannot have multiple statements inside a branch. Suppose that before dividing by 2 we want to print something on the screen. In this case we cannot just write a format like this. because if does not know how to group the branch in which it holds and the branch between the condition does not hold. We have to be explicit using the program form which runs multiple statements and return the value of the last one. In this case we want to group the format and the division so we write progen and we put inside those two expressions 
and we can verify that it first print uh, the string and then the value. In this video we have seen how to work with variables and how to make branching in Lisp with two different syntax. The next step will be making some loops.